Oh, okay, we're on. So anyways, um, I wanted to make a video today uh, talking about a couple things um, that have come up in a lot of the comments for a lot of my videos. Um, and there's also some recent developments that I want to touch on as well. So first off, I want to address a question that I've gotten a lot over the years since I first posted the videos, and that is with uh, Broadway Limited models and retaining smoke and then also having a secondary or an aftermarket decoder. Um, I posted a video of a Y6B um, that I had TCS wow in and had the smoke retained and also the Norfolk and Western Class J Paragon 2 uh, that was run in the ESU and also had the smoke retained. Um, the reason I never bothered to come out with a video on how to do that, uh, not that I couldn't do that, is that um, due to recent developments, I think there's going to be some better options out there. Um, how I was doing it was I was using the Broadway Limited factory decoder to run the smoke, of course, and also to run lighting effects. And then I was using the secondary decoder to do the motor control um, and, of course, the sound. And um, they were both set to the same address. Um, there's some problems that you run into with that, such as programming. Um, you know, kind of how you have to do it is you have to set up the Broadway decoder first, and then you have to lock it. Um, and when you lock it, then any changes that you do to that address as far as CVs, um, it doesn't change anything. What it does prevent you from doing is things like consisting. Um, if you want to, like, double head steam, uh, kind of prevents you from being able to do that. On top of all those things, I kind of always felt like the installation was a little bit sloppy. Um, I mean, it's just kind of a big jarbled mess inside of the tender. And um, while the two models that I built did work, um, I just wasn't completely happy sharing that process on how to do it just because I felt the wiring was kind of sloppy. A um, couple other issues I ran into with that too is I did have a couple decoder failures. Not sure if it was a result of the decoders in general being bad or if it was a cause from what I was doing. So I didn't want to put any information out there until I kind of had it fully properly vetted. Um, you know, I've had about two years of testing or more. Um, didn't experience any other failures other than with the um, models that I tried converting and had a failure. Um, so that's about it for that part of it. But the reason that I don't want to pursue that anymore is just because I think there's going to be some much better options coming out. So one of those um, that is coming out is with the Scale Trains acquisition of the MTH tooling. They have announced that they're going to be putting ESU sound in those MTH models, and those MTH models are going to have smoke. Now with that, there's two ways that that can be done. Uh, they can take the Atherin path and have it set up for those Soothe smoke units, which aren't really that great. Um, they're just kind of a static flow. They don't have the chuffing uh, microprocessor control, controlled smoke like the MTH models did. So, and they've also mentioned that they're going to be using ESU in these models. So my hope is, and these are a lot of theorizing and making leaps here, um, assuming things that have not been confirmed by manufacturers. These are just my theories. Um, and everything in this video is strictly my opinion. You know, I don't work for a model manufacturer or anything like that. Um, I pay attention to this stuff. Um, obviously, as much as I dig into models, there's a lot of things that I pick up. I understand how they're made. I understand how they work. Um, I understand what needs to be done to get certain results out of them. So with that being said, um, you know, assuming that MTH is, or not MTH, but Scale Trains now is going to use ESU decoders, which they, they confirm that, and that those models are going to have smoke, um, you know, one path is the SUV smoke units, which I'm hoping they don't take that path. The other is that they would actually have some sort of chuffing smoke, similar to what Broadway Limited has or MTH. Now, in order to do that, it's not a huge leap in ESU. Um, ESU decoders already have that ability in them. Um, in larger scales, they do produce, they actually have a uh, smoke unit that you can buy for O scale or S scale. 
Um, I think even G scale, there's a smoke unit you can buy for those. They just don't have an HO sized one that will fit in an HO boiler. So I'm hoping that ESU makes that part commercially available. Um, you know, it would really suck if they only strictly make that for scale trains and they don't allow anybody else to buy those separately. Um, so that, that's another thing that would have to happen in order for this to work is they have to sell that smoke unit separately. So if they do that, then the potential exists that you could take something like a Paragon, well, really any Broadway locomotive, but, um, you know, specifically the Paragon 2, 3, and what will be 4 with smoke, and you could use all of those electronics, um, probably have to swap out the smoke unit to an ESU one, but you'd be able to put an ESU decoder in there, set it, program it, all of those things, and you'd still have smoke, you'd have lights, you'd have better sound, you'd have better motor control, all of those things. So I'm hoping that that is a path that becomes a reality. However, we're probably two years away from that. And again, all of those things are a giant assumption of what could happen. And um, there's a lot of things that need to go right for that to work. Um, so the next thing I want to touch on is Paragon 4. So Broadway has recently announced that they're going to be doing Paragon 4 um, and addressing some of the problems that they've had with some of their previous locomotives. Um, from some of the comments that I've been seeing, uh, both in the model training groups and on my YouTube channel in general, I think people are getting the wrong idea about what this is going to be. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of thinking that this is going to be the answer to everything that they've ever wanted. And I don't think that's going to be the case. So I think people need to temper their expectations a little bit. But I do want to go over what some of the things that have been confirmed that Paragon 4 does do. So we're going to take a look at the computer here next. All right, so hopefully you can see this and kind of follow along with me. Um, we'll just go down the list here. So, of course, it's called Paragon 4. Um, one key point is that it's going to have a built-in Keep Alive now. They call it the Go Pack. Um, that was something that was starting to become available on a lot of Paragon 3 models, but they're going to do that built-in now. Um, this Pro Lighting Mode, I'm hoping that, that that's something that... One of the biggest annoyances I have with Broadway locomotives is that the headlight only operates in forward um, and in neutral. Uh, if you have the locomotive sitting in reverse, uh, the headlight goes off. And, you know, if you've ever watched steam locomotives, the headlight doesn't just turn off when they go backwards. Um, that's something that needs to stay on. Um, so I'm hoping that with that pro lighting mode, that's something that they allow that to change um, so that it's programmable. I think it will be. Um, so, and then there's also a switcher mode, which is not really new to decoders. Tsunami 2, well, soundtracks in general has had that for years. Um, high resolution audio. Um, that's not really too much of a giveaway there. Um, you know, what is it high resolution of? Is it high resolution of the same recordings that they've had for 15 years that they continue to put in things? Or is it something new? Um, that kind of remains to be seen, and that is really the biggest question mark that I have with Paragon 4 is what kind of recordings are they going to have on here? Um, quillable Whistle, uh, that's not really a new thing. Uh, that's something that's been around, I think, even since Paragon 2. Not with everything, but with some whistles, they have had that feature. Um, three selectable horns, nothing different there. That's been the same since Paragon 2. Um, alternate Whistle. Nothing different there. Um, going back over the years, um, uh, the Milwaukee 261 has a uh, air horn on it, and I think it has a whistle. And then also um, the New York Central Niagara's, uh, they had an air horn as well as a whistle as well. So that kind of allows you to use both. So again, not a new feature. That's something that's been around for a long time. Um, adjustable bell, um, uh, not really something new to models, but that would probably be nicer to have that as opposed to just one setting. 
um, mappable functions, not a new setting, um, new crew talk, um, that would be nice. Again, not new to the industry at all. Grade, cost, grade crossing automatic signal. Um, I'm guessing that that's just sort of like what TCS has, or I think sound, I don't know if, I haven't saw that on a Soundtrax model, but I know on, um, even on MTH, that was a thing where you just hit a button and it would do two long blasts, short blast, and then another long blast. So, I mean, that would be nice to have that just as one function. Um, automatic forward reverse signal, not new. They've had that since Paragon 2. Um, prime mover sound intensity varies with load. Load based sound is something that they've had since Paragon 2. Um, it's a lot less noticeable with steam. I know on some of their diesels, like the old AC6000s, had load based sound. Um, so, I mean, that's a cool feature. I like that. And load based, I think, is how that should be. I, I don't like the way ESU does that with that you know, drive hold feature. I think that's kind of piss poor. Um, but I, I really do like it when it's load based. Um, that's how TCS does theirs as well. Um, and also Soundtracks does theirs that way as well. So I, I really do like that feature. Um, adjustable sound volumes, nothing new there. Easy reset button, that, that, that's been there since Paragon 1. So, with Paragon 4, um, one announcement that they did make is that they're going to be doing some diesels. I think it was like the GP35 or something like that. Not really something that I'm after. Um, but also they're going to redo the Dreyfus Hudson brass hybrid with Paragon 4. I think that's actually going to be out next month. Um, I might try to get one of those if I can. I'm sure the price is going to be a little bit steep. And they're also going to be kind of hard to get. Um, but I wouldn't mind having that one. Um, also I did see here, and also they're doing the... The Santa Fe 282s, that was a recent announcement. Two of these are kind of new. Um, they're going to redo the Milwaukee S3. And I missed out on this last time, getting 261. So, might take them up on it this time. And then also, oops. They're going to rerun the uh, L1 SAs from Pensy. Kind of always wanted one of those. <clears throat> kind of missed out on them when they did them in Paragon 3. So, and it looks like they'll be coming in relatively soon. That is a Pensy steam engine that I don't have, believe it or not. There is actually one that I don't have. So a little more details on some of those upcoming Paragon 4 releases. It's actually a GP20 is the diesel that they're coming out with. Uh, that seems to be the only diesel that's announced with it at this point. And then also they're doing early challengers. These are now going to be a brass hybrid model. Uh, my understanding is that they did cancel all pre-orders of the previous Paragon 3 that was supposed to be a die-cast model. So if you had a pre-order in for one of these, it has been canceled. You'll want to call your dealer and set a new pre-order for the new model that's going to be a brass hybrid. And these look fantastic. Um, doesn't really fit into what I do, and they are going to be pretty pricey. But uh, definitely would not mind having one of those. And as we go up here, there's that Santa Fe. Now, I want to go to today's announcement. <clears throat> so, I don't know how well we can see this here, but we'll zoom in a little bit there. So, I've been seeing these rumored um, in some of the groups for probably a couple weeks now. And uh, I didn't really put too much stock into it just because things are always rumored. But uh, this is pretty proof positive. Uh, Broadway Limited is going to be doing a FEF, Union Pacific. Um, and you can see here, and they only really try to hide it, it's 844, pretty plain as day. 
So we'll take a look at some of the photos here. And it looks like they will be doing a couple different versions of them. So, I mean, now that they are going to be doing these, um, one thing that is pretty nice about this is it does lead it to a pathway for many other things, um, such as, you know, with that particular design, I mean, that you can do FEF1s, FEF2s, FEF3s. Um, 844 itself has been in numerous paint schemes over the years. Um, when it first came out, I'm not sure if that was a coal burner or not, um, or if it was an oil burner pretty much throughout its life. Um, you know, in the 60s, I think it was, it actually got repainted into a different paint scheme uh, from its original black. Um, <clears throat> so that's one scheme that they could do. Um, they could also do it as the Greyhound scheme when it was 8444. Um, and of course, there's the present day version of it. And then there's also the version from about 10 to 15 years ago where it didn't have the silver stripe on the side. And of course, there's other road numbers that they can do with these. So this is going to be a huge seller from these uh, for these guys. Um, pretty stoked about it. Um, you know, obviously one thing is that, you know, what is going to be the cost of it? And I have a little theory on that that I'm going to show you here. And that's based on, let's see, steam. So the FEF is going to be a 484. So if we go off of what they're doing on the Milwaukee S3s, which is also a 484 diecast locomotive as well. MSRP on these is $599. I expect that that will probably be pretty close on this Union Pacific engine. Um, I, you know, it all depends on also whether they decide to make it a brass hybrid or not. Um, it looked like from the photos there that there may have been some brass detail parts, but the actual construction of it is mostly die cast. So I don't think it would be considered a brass hybrid model. Um, so that, that's good. That will definitely keep the cost down a little bit. But I think you'll find that it's going to slot in here very close to this price. To be honest, I, I hope that they don't try to gouge us too much, but I think that they'll kind of be able to charge almost anything they want for this locomotive, and people are going to buy it in massive amounts. Uh, it's going to be the first time in HO that we've had an opportunity to get a die-cast UP844. Um, previous offerings of it, you know, River Rossi had a model that dated back to the 60s, um, and, you know, and it did prove over the years and eventually the DCC ready version that was produced in the early 2000s was actually a pretty nice model for its time. And then Athern uh, did another one in plastic and, you know, to date that's probably the best example of the locomotive, but it is all plastic. Um, you know, it just doesn't feel very solid. I've had a couple of them over the years and I've always ended up selling them off. Um, so finally, my hope is here that there's actually a metal version of 844 that's coming um, you know I would have loved to have saw like MTH do it or somebody else um, but you know this is a real kind of shot across the bow to Athern and scale trains if they were planning on doing any more of these I don't know if it was one that scale trains had in the works you know they did say that they had one steam engine that they were planning on and you know they're already working in the development of it um, for their sake I hope it wasn't 844 um, but you know, time will only tell what that's going to be. But Broadway's pretty much going to stake their uh, claim on doing the FEFs now. Um, at this point, you know, with Broadway doing one of these, I think you're going to see the market flooded with a lot of the Atherns on eBay. Um, people are going to be dumping those plastic models in favor of getting a, a die cast one. So if you are looking for, you know, an 844 now, I think your chances of getting one's going to be a little bit better because there's going to be more of those in circulation out there. Um, also, you know, if you really have a choice between the two of these, even on a future run from Athern of 844, I don't really know why you would buy the Athern one. I mean, obviously I don't have the, the Broadway Limited one out here just yet, and we don't know what it's going to be, but I, I think it's, they're going to knock it out of the park. And, uh, 
really cannot wait for them to announce it. I'll have my pre-order in on the first day. Um, you know, if they do a couple schemes that I want, I'll probably order multiple. So it's going to be pretty pricey when that all happens. So that's about it for this video. But I, you know, I wanted to share these updates with you and kind of what I'm planning on and what I'm hoping for. So I hope it was informative and um, that's about it for this one.